Justice Secretary Minardo Guevara on Wednesday says he will now review his department's contracts awarded in 2017 to the family-owned security firm of Solicitor General Jose Calida. Calida's family-owned security firm Vigilant Investigative and Security Agency Incorporated won two contracts worth 12.4 million pesos with the DOJ in 2017. This was during the time of former Justice Secretary Vitaliano Aguirre II. Guevara was at the Senate on Wednesday for his confirmation hearing before the Commission on Appointments. Senator Kiko Pangilinan raises the issue of vigilance contracts during Guevara's confirmation hearing. Pangilinan approaches Guevara and clarifies what the Justice Secretary meant by his earlier statement that he doesn't see the need to investigate vigilance DOJ contracts. Guevara tells Pangilinan, someone just has to challenge the validity of vigilance contracts with the DOJ. Nobody has come up with such an allegation. But nonetheless, the DOJ will take a look now that it's brought to the fore already. So, to satisfy everyone, we'll just take a look. Okay. Guevara says there is a presumption of regularity on the contracts because Vigilant is a legitimate company which won the awards through public bidding. Now, kung merong ethical considerations yun, uh, well, uh, that's for Senator, for Sol Gian Calida to, to deal with. No? But from our point of view, we are dealing with a legitimate corporation. When asked what his views were on questions on conflict of interest, Guevara says he doesn't see anything wrong with public officials having shares in private companies. Ang bawal, yung ikaw mismo yung nagpapatakbo ng kumpanya na yun, no? na actively involved ka in the operations, in the management of a certain corporation. Kasi public official ka na. Kalida resigned as president and chairman of Vigilant in June 2016, right before he took office as Solicitor General, but he still holds 60% of company shares. His wife Milagros is now the chairman of the company with her three children as officers. No other person aside from the Kalida family has a share or is an officer of the company. Still on the Solicitor General, President Rodrigo Duterte says he won't fire Kalida. Duterte says Kalida is supposedly no longer participating in his family's company. The president also claims Kalida already divested from Vigilant. Duterte says, quote, Kalida's security firm has been around for a while. Why should I fire him? He's good. Tourism Secretary Bernadette Romulo Puyat says the brothers of resigned Tourism Secretary Juan de Teo have not yet returned the controversial 60 million pesos they received from the Tourism Department for advertisements in their show. Teo resigned amid the 60 million peso controversy involving her and her brothers Ben and Erwin Tulfo. The amount was paid by the DOT for ad placements in the Tulfo Brothers show Kilos Pronto, aired on PTV4. Teo's lawyer and spokesperson Ferdinand Topasho earlier said Ben and Erwin Tulfo would return the money. Um, we'll leave it up to the COA kasi silang magsasabi kung may dis disallowance. But Ramon, the eldest of the Tulfo Brothers, previously said in his column that Topasho was not speaking on behalf of the family when Topasho promised that the brothers would return the money. Budget Secretary Benjamin Jokno says Filipinos should not complain too much over the high prices of fuel and basic commodities. The first package of the tax reform law raised the levy on gasoline to 7 pesos per liter from 4 pesos and 35 centavos and imposed an excise tax of 2 pesos and 50 centavos per liter on diesel. The tax reform law aims to support the government's ambitious Build, Build, Build infrastructure program. But critics say the higher taxes on fuel, rising global oil prices, and the weakening of the peso triggered the increase on fuel prices and basic goods in the country. Jokna says, quote, Remember, we had $135 per barrel under Gloria Macapagal Arroyo, so I think we should be less of a crybaby. The budget chief insists Filipinos now have higher take-home pay because of lowered personal income tax. He adds the poor receives unconditional cash transfers. Yokno also opposes raising the minimum wage because it would exacerbate unemployment. He insists the government should not back down on implementing tax reform. Yokno says, quote, We are promising you world-class infrastructure. Do you want us to stop doing that? Traffic congestion is costing 3.5 billion pesos daily. Do you want us to stop doing that? A World Bank report says around 22 million Filipinos, or one-fifth of the Philippines' population, still live below the national poverty line despite the continued growth of the country's economy. Latest data from the World Bank show poverty in recent years did decline, with 21.6% of Filipinos living below the poverty line in 2015 compared to 26.6% in 2006. This decline is mainly due to the expansion of jobs outside of agriculture, the government's Pantawid Pamilyang Pilipino program or 4 Peace, and remittances from Filipinos abroad. But the World Bank says more needs to be done to ensure economic growth is felt by all. The World Bank says, quote, 
Despite the generally good economic performance, poverty remains high and the pace of poverty reduction has been slow. It says that among the major factors behind slow poverty reduction are minimal growth and productivity in agriculture, limited manufacturing base to absorb workers moving out of agriculture, high inequality of income, and natural disasters and conflict. With two out of five impoverished Filipinos living in Mindanao, the World Bank says making a difference in Mindanao makes a big difference to the Philippines. The World Bank also insists on the need to include investments in healthcare services as part of poverty reduction efforts and to fully implement the reproductive health law. United States television network ABC on Tuesday cancels the hit working-class comedy Roseanne after its star Roseanne Barr aimed a racist tweet at a former advisor of former President Barack Obama. Barr, a vocal supporter of President Donald Trump, who has used Twitter to voice far-right and conspiracy theorist views, hit Obama's former aide, Valerie Jarrett. She tweeted, quote, Muslim Brotherhood and Planet of the Apes had a baby equals VJ. ABC pulls the plug on Barr's show over the abhorrent, repugnant tweet, which it says was inconsistent with our values. Barr's talent agency ICM calls her tweet disgraceful and unacceptable. ICM says, quote, Consequently, we have notified her that we will not represent her. Effective immediately, Roseanne Barr is no longer a client. Barr apologizes to Jared and to all Americans following a barrage of criticism on social media. She says, quote, I am truly sorry for making a bad joke about her politics and her looks. I should have known better. Forgive me. My joke was in bad taste. Barr adds, quote, I apologize. I am now leaving Twitter. She has since returned to the social media platform and continues to apologize for her actions. Roseanne was rebooted in March after a gap of 21 years with Barr's character controversially recast as a Trump supporter. The show was renewed for an 11th season after scoring huge ratings and generally positive reviews for its season 10 opener. Thank you.